we are doing. Today's uh, topic is Connect with others. Uh, objectives. Today we will be seeing about uh, a basic introduction about Connect with others, the diagnostic criteria, uh, the epidemiology, clinical features, etiology, the differential diagnosis, and the comorbidities associated with it, the course and prognosis, assessment and management of Connect with others. Introduction. Uh, Conduct disorder lies in the spectrum of disorders known as disruptive behavioral disorders, which also include a position defined disorder. This characterizes a pattern of behavior that demonstrates aggression and violation of the rights of others and evolves over time. Thorough psychiatric evaluation is required to uh, find out if, if there are any other comorbidities associated with it and also the conduct disorder. Uh, we will be seeing the basic diagnostic criteria. First, the DSM-5 criteria. Uh, basic rights of others are to be violated and among the following 15, 3 should be present for the, uh, for the past 1 year and of those 3, at least 1 should have been present for the past 6 months. It is grouped under 4 categories. Uh, first is aggression towards people and animals. Uh, the patient is found to often bully, threaten or intimidate others often from to initiate physical fights. Patients have used a weapon that can cause physical harm to others. For example, a bat, a brick or a broken water bottle. Broken bottle. Has, uh, has been physically cruel towards people and physically cruel towards animals. Has stolen while confronting a victim. For example, uh, in English, armed robbery or money. And has forced someone into sexual, uh, sexual activity. This comes under aggression towards people and animals. Next is destruction to property. Uh, the patient would have deliberately engaged in fire setting with the intention of causing a serious damage to the property and might have deliberately destroyed others' property by any other means other than fire setting. Next is deceitfulness or death. Patient would have broken into someone else's house, building or car. Often lies to obtain goods or favors or to avoid obligations, that is, conning others, has stolen items of non trivial values without confronting a victim, that is, without breaking an entry, or would have engaged in acts, acts of forgery. And the last is serious violation of rules. Often stays out at night, uh, despite parental prohibitions, beginning prior to the age of 30, has run away from home overnight at least twice while living in the parental house or in the surrogate house or at least once without returning for a lengthy period of time. And the last is the common proven principle which begins prior to the age of 30. These disabilities cause clinically significant impairment in social, academic and occupational functioning and if the uh, individual is 18 years or older, the criteria should not have been met for antisocial personality disorder. There are uh, specifiers used in this. Uh, it can either be of silent onset type, where at least one symptom should have started prior to the age of 10 years of age. Adolescent onset type, where none of the symptoms were present prior to the age of 10 years of age. And unspecified onset type. And another specifier is a patient has limited pro social emotions. Uh, pro social emotions, uh, to classify under this specifier, two out of the following should have been present for a period of one year. The following are uh, lack of remorse or guilt due to the activities, callousness that is lack of empathy, unconcern about their performance, and having a shallow effect. One, two out of these four should have been present for the period of one year. And severity specified, we can either we can grade it as mild, moderate, and severe. Mild is when they cause minor harm to others, that is uh, theft, that is stealing items of non-trivial value or running a serious violation of rules, not causing harm to others. Where a severe, where there is considerable harm is being caused to others. And according to ICD 10, it is classified as contact disorders as F91. Repetitive and persistent pattern of dissocial, aggressive, or defiant conduct. And such behavior, when it is at its most extreme for the individual, should amount to major violations of age appropriate social expectations and is therefore more severe than ordinary childish mischief, mischief or adolescent rebelliousness. For example, temper, temper tantrums at the age of 3 cannot be included in this. So, a duration here is for 6 months, while the patient period is for 1 year. And the patient can be can uh, show symptoms of anger, cruelty, bully, bully lying, cruelty and destructive behavior. Uh, there are 3 uh, 
it, it can either be of uh, conduct disorder confined to the family context where the symptoms uh, behavioral disorder is only in the family context unsocialized conduct disorder and socialized conduct disorder where they have peer groups uh, in socialized conduct disorder they have peer groups with whom they have uh, uh, proper interaction with while, uh, while in unsocialized conduct disorder that is not uh, that does not happen so and epidemiology uh, the age of uh, onset uh, is uh, younger in boys than in girls. Boys is 10 to 12 years of age, whereas in girls it's 14 to 15 years of age. It is found to occur with higher frequency in children of parents with antisocial personality disorder or those with alcohol use disorder when, in, when compared to the general population. The clinical features uh, aggressive antisocial behavior is seen. It can include either bullying, physical aggression, or cruelty towards peers. Hostile. Patients want to be verbally abusive, defined and have a negativistic attitude towards the adults. Persistent lying, truancy and vandalism is seen. In severe cases, destruction, stealing and physical violence also occurs. Sexual behavior, regular use of substances such as tobacco, liquor or illicit psychoactive substances, which is found to be quite early uh, when for, uh, for that for that age. Suicidal thoughts, gestures and acts are quite frequent and occurs often following a conflict with peers, family members or the law and are unable to uh, uh, solve their own difficulties. Impaired social attachment is found in these uh, children. They have difficulties with peer relationship. Uh, they are found to be often different a uh, person who is much older or much younger than their age and the relationships are mostly going to be superficial and they have a superficial relationship with other antisocial youngsters. These patients have poor self-esteem, they project an image of toughness on the exterior, they lack the skills to communicate in a socially acceptable way, they have little wish uh, or regard for the feelings uh, or welfare of others. Uh, at times, guilt or remorse is present, but they often try to put the blame on others to avoid punishment. Uh, on the parenting side, either they might have uh, had overly harsh parenting or a total lack of supervision uh, and uh, they express uh, sexual violation and physical violation of others. Uh, when uh, they are punished for these behaviors, they, show, they express doubt as rage and frustration rather than trying to uh, solve their problems. Children with aggressive conduct disorder are uncooperative, hostile and provocative. Superficially, they are found to be charmful and compliant until we start discussing with them their problems, uh, their problematic behaviors and that is when they begin to deny. They justify their misbehavior, try to put the blame on another person or become angry or become suspicious about the source of information. Uh, they express uh, anger towards the examiner and resentment. Hostility is not just towards adult authority figures but also expressed towards other uh, children of their age such as their peers uh, as in bullying. And they exhibit a lack of trust towards others, uh, lying is present, uh, present, boasting and express little in, uh, interest in the other person's their response. Aggressive behavior uh, rarely offers pleasure and, uh, it, uh, and also includes repeated fluency, vandalism, physical uh, severe aggression or assault against others. Early problems uh, such as poor school performance, mild behavioral problems and getting depressive symptoms can also be seen. Uh, paternal discipline is rarely ideal and can either vary from being excessively harsh or to being inconsistent. Family evaluation shows marital disharmony, uh, presence of uh, surrogate, uh, surrogate parents or either the child may be an unwanted or unplanned child. Stereotype pattern of impulsive and unpredictable uh, verbal misclosed AC and as told earlier, uh, uh, presence of alcohol use disorder or antisocial personality disorder in the father is also seen. Etiology. First, uh, it's, it states that both bi biological and environmental factors towards, uh, together contribute towards this. Environmental factors uh, account for around 11% or biological factors account for around 40%. So, the, and the family factors are growing up in a family with antisocial parents, uh, having a father uh, with alcohol use disorder, uh, residing in an urban environment, seen more commonly in low socioeconomic states. And in uh, presence of psychopathology in the parents, such as maternal depression, can be seen. And genetic influences, uh, polymorphism of uh, MAO AG uh, is seen. Physiological factors, reward processing theory suggests, suggests that 
low physiological arousal to environmental stress uh, of conduct problems in these children. The lack of fear and anxiety in childhood to cues or social punishment can also contribute to this. The neurotransmitters involved are a reduction in dopamine and norepinephrine is seen and uh, decreased sensitivity of uh, serotonin 1A receptor is also seen. Uh, neuroendocrine factors, a uh, decreased uh, cortisol levels is seen. And uh, anatomical uh, neuroendocrine factors are uh, the anatomic uh, functional deficits in the anterior brain region, especially the prefrontal cortex. The psychological factors, the cognitive control theory, uh, children with uh, conduct disorder are found to have problems in executive cognitive function deficits and also problems in information uh, processing. Uh, the parent child factors are the degree of uh, parental involvement with the child can be either very less or extremely harsh parental is seen. Poor monitoring or lack of supervision is seen, is, can be seen. Uh, the parent does not know what are the kind of fears that the child is associating himself with and a coercive family pro uh, process and harsh inconsistent discipline uh, practices are seen. The various differential diagnosis and the comorbidities seen. Uh, the various differential, uh, the comorbidities seen are uh, it can either occur with uh, uh, ADHD, which is frequently seen with conduct disorders. Opposition, the, the opposition deafening disorder is also seen, uh, and comorbid uh, ODE and conduct disorder can increase the risk of substance use in these children. Substance use disorders show the poor prognosis, and there is a high prevalence of mood disorders in uh, children with conduct disorders. Other differential diagnoses include specific learning disorder and psychotic disorders. The shared risk factors between depressive and conduct disorders are uh, presence of family conflict, adverse early life events, uh, early history of conduct disturbances, uh, where there is a deviation to the level of parental uh, involvement and affiliation with other delinquent peers, uh, 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 presence of substance use. The various differential diagnoses are uh, ADHD, opposition dependent disorder. This is a minor form of uh, conduct disorder where the uh, rights of others are not violated. How is it violated in conduct disorder? Antisocial personality disorder, this is diagnosed post the age of 18. Adjustment reaction, here once the termination of the stress, the symptoms reduce. And mood disorder, uh, where we see a mood symptoms such as persistent low mood and we can interest in other personal activities. Post and prognosis. Uh, good prognostic factors are presence of mild symptoms such as fluency, uh, not uh, violating the rules of others, and violating uh, uh, not only the rights of others but just violating the rules. No coexisting psychopathology and normal uh, intelligence. Uh, the negative uh, bad prognostic factors are young, uh, uh, occurrence of symptoms at a younger age, more the number of symptoms, and severe symptoms. Which, uh, and these people are vulnerable to other comorbid psychiatric disorders later in life. Uh, assaultive behavior and parental criminality, which has a high risk of incarceration and imprisonment. Uh, children with chronic disorder uh, they can develop into antisocial personality disorder later, later as well. Next, we will be seeing the assessment and management. So, it is uh, as, uh, first the assessment, the various scales that can be used are overt aggression scale, aggression behavior checklist, and Iowa aggression scale in India. We use Childhood Psychopathology Measurement Schedule, CPMS, which is a semi-structured interview containing a list of around 75 symptoms. Of this, there is a designated section for conduct disorder, which gives a dimension score for it. That's a good reliability, well, uh, sensitivity and specificity of 80 to 87 percent respectively. Uh, the management can either be prevention or if the patient has conduct disorder, pharmacological or non-pharmacological treatment policy. So, for the prevention part, uh, there are various intervention programs that have been introduced. Uh, first, we will be seeing about fast track prevention intervention. Uh, it, is a, it was a 10 year intervention program which was started when the children were in kindergarten itself. Uh, it involved, it included parent behavior management, uh, development of cognitive skills for a child, uh, encouraging the child to read, mentoring and home visiting done by the uh, faculties. Uh, it was found that children in this intervention program were less likely to develop conduct disorder when followed up over a period of 10 years and for a period of 2 years later on after that also. Keep it. Because we the pharmacological agents that can be used. Uh, atypical antipsychotics can be used. Uh, I commonly use a risperidone, olanzapine, aripiprazole and pregepin. 
Uh, sodium hydrate uh, is found to be quite uh, found to show good response in those with aggression and agitation. Found with clonidine also reduces aggression. Uh, selective serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors uh, found are uh, used when patients uh, exhibit symptoms of impuls impulsivity, irritability, and mood lability. And treatment of other comorbid disorders such as ADHD, uh, specific organic disorder, uh, bipolar disorder, or mood disorder, and substance use disorder should be done. The non pharmacological uh, uh, non pharmacological management is first using all the contingency management programs. <coughs> is based on the hypothesis that children with chronic disorder uh, are from families in which they have not experienced a proper contingent environment. That is, they have a male development of social skills resulting in their uh, behavioral problems. So, we try, uh, we have the following goals in contingency management plans. We, uh, we set behavioral goals for the, patient, uh, for the child and slowly shape the child's behavior in the child's specific area of interest. And we monitor systematically as to whether the child is achieving these goals or not. And positive reinforcement is given as uh, the child takes steps in trying to achieve these goals. And uh, for undesired behavior, penalty is given. This is contingency management programs. Next is cognitive behavioral skill training. Social cognition deficit is found in children with conduct disorder. So, uh, due to this, they have impulsivity and res uh, respond uh, to situations. In nine. So we have skills to reduce impulsivity. Uh, they are taught how to recognize the problems, to consider alternative responses which do not uh, have these behavioral problems, to select the adaptive one to deal more effectively with the problems in hand, and the therapist plays a role of modeling role playing situations and prompting the use of the appropriate skills uh, taught in the appropriate situations. Uh, there are two uh, programs. One is Carlson's Problem Solving Skill Training, which is which was a 12 week program where uh, children are taught to develop problem solving solutions when facing contextual uh, situations, and parent management training is added was added to it. Next is Anger Coping Program, which consists of 18 sessions uh, uh, done for children between the grades of 4 to 6. Uh, child's uh, increased development of emotional recognition and regulation and managing anger is what is taught here. Another coping strategies include distraction, self-talk, perspective taking, goal setting and problem solving. Parent management training. Uh, the parents are taught the skill of developing and implementing a, a systematic contingency management plan in the home setting. E is to improve the interaction between the parent and the child at home, to change the antecedents to the behavior and to increase the possibility that the child will show pro-social behavior. It also helps the parents to improve their capability to keep an eye on the child for proper supervision and teaching them more effective discipline strategies. It can also be community based treatment or non systemic therapy. Community based treatment uh, uh, targets the development of therapeutic schools and residential treatment centers, which can provide a structured program to reduce such disruptive behaviors. Multi systemic therapy targets family school, individual, that is uh, holistically, with the focus on improving the family dynamics, academic function and the child's behavior in the context of the various system where the child is involved. These are my references, uh, CPP and NCBA article, uh, clinical practice guidance for the management of chronic disorders in the trauma